keep them applies going. I remember it like it was yesterday, Heather. I want to say it was probably 1982. 1992. 1992. Mm-hmm. Being on the West Coast, and this is when hip hop as a as a movement was exploding, had no perimeters, had no boundaries. Right. Wasn't anything that we felt like we couldn't accomplish, but we knew nothing was guaranteed. Mm. So that's when you saw people at their most creative. Our minds were fertile at that time. And, that, and, and at that time, we were all starting to look towards proprietorship. We saw how much money this culture has made for other people. When you look at all the different industries, when you look at back then when we were pressing up vinyl and lacquer and CDs, oh. all the music that was being pressed up, we, no weren't, we weren't pressing it up and right. we weren't distributing it. And so therefore we were not receiving the lion's share of the profit. Mm. Um, you saw this in electronics, you saw this in all areas, especially apparel and wardrobe. And I remember in 1992, when this brand, if I'm not mistaken about that year, I will be corrected. <laughs> and I'm on the radio. I'm on doing radio on the West Coast. And I remember seeing this brand for us, by us. On the low. Wow. And I remember watching LL Cool J do that Gap commercial, I think it was, with the hat on. Mm-hmm. For us, by us. And on the low. On the low. <laughs> right? <laughs> and it was out. something so empowering about that. That slogan, that mantra, for us, by us. That should be the blueprint, the mindset we should all have when we come into this industry. Mm -hmm. For us, by us. These guys went on to create a multi-billion dollar industry. Mm. So many knockoff lines came after them. But so many lines were also inspired because of them. And so I want to say salute to all the founders of FUBU, big round of applause for them. 100%. But we got the point person who was dealing directly with key retail accounts um, that helped the primary sales of FUBU. These guys were self-taught, man. You should have saw them, man. They've been flashy ever since and still look the <laughs> damn same. I don't know how they did it, but I want to welcome my brother Keith here. Keith Perrin from FUBU is here. Give him a big yeah. round of applause. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Keith, man. What's up, Swiss? For wow. us... By us, bro. Yes, sir. You have to be extremely proud of what your contributions have been to this, not just this culture, this society, the global society Mm -hmm. when it comes to apparel. When we see the ASAP Rockies or we see the the Diddy's or we see all Mm -hmm. the different people who who actually, you know, Walker wear, you know, that that actually entered that realm. You guys inspired a lot of people, man. Nah, man. I'm, listen, somebody told me the other day, he said, if you never do anything else, you're cemented in the culture forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And that's that was deep. I was like, wow. Yeah. But I'm very proud, man. I'm very proud of what we've done. Yeah, man. What did you... Um, and you're from Queens, right? Yes, sir. Everybody's from Queens? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I heard you were y'all talking horse talk, thun ye talk. You do the thun language? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. You speak thun language? <laughs> yes, yes. Let me it's, hear something. You speak thun language? Why are you going to put me on the spot, thun dun? You know what I'm saying? Come on, thun. Yo, they, the horse took me to Queensbridge and they were speaking thun to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Nah, it's, it's, it's a Queens thing, I think. I think that's more of a Queens thing. Because that's what, you know, when we was out there, like, the stuff that we say, like, we used to talk in almost a way, like, I could talk to you like this. Like, I could talk to you a whole sentence like that with my boys, and they know exactly what I'm saying, but if you're standing next to me, you won't know what I'm saying. You would understand the whole thing. I love that. Queens got their own language. (laughs) Um, Man, when y'all first started, Keith, I mean, what was the dream? Did it seem realistic? Um, No. No, not all, not at all. But you know, our dream was to really just have a store, and be able to sell the the clothes that we were making in the store, and it just went, you know, on to a hundred. It just went to a hundred from there. And we actually was able to secure three hundred thousand dollars at the magic show, and then we was like, okay, well, we got some here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I was just telling Chauncey, I said, Damon said, yo, you, you got to quit your job. And I was a property manager. I was making like fifty thousand dollars a year. So I was like, how much do how much we gonna get? He was like, "Now just quit your job, and we gonna focus on this 100. percent And when it pop off, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, I got a little girl, and you know, I'm not trying to be in child support court, so I, I'm a, yeah. I'm gonna work this out. But I wound up getting fired so that I can get unemployment uh-huh. rather than quitting, and then we just started it, and 
Once we secured that deal, man, it was it was over after that. It was over after that, man. Yeah, it was over. You can't get over the hood trick about getting fired. Sway. Yeah, I, saw I saw that he said fired. <laughs> I got fired on purpose. Oh, yeah, so yeah, sure. on no, they get that unemployment, man. <laughs> so who was the first um, corporation to approach y'all to invest in Fubu? Um, I think it was the Mob. The Mob? Yeah, man. It was like Wait, you know, because we put the the listen, Mob. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It was like oh, you shit. know what it is. Yeah. You got shady characters in every business. Okay. So when we put the ad out for a million dollars in sales, need need um investors, we got all kind of calls. Like, hey, what you need? Ten million? Twenty million? You know, I could do that. And you know, we from the hood, so we like, man, ain't nobody offer me ten, twenty million over the phone like that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, so we wasn't really biting on that. And then we got a call from Samsung, and once we got that call. Even Damon, he was like, oh, y'all hood, you know, y'all stay here. <laughs> you go deal with it and secure this deal because I don't want y'all, you know, we was, you know what I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we was back at that time. You know, mm-hmm. we had no media training or anything. So we was able to, he was able to go up there, secure that. And then when he came back, we thought we was on. Mm-hmm. And the dude never called. So I always shout out Fredro Starr because he came by the house one day and asked for some, some clothes. And we gave him some clothes and he wound up doing New York Undercover. Mm-hmm. And he got killed in the shirt, and it was like, I want to say about thirty seconds. It was like a thirty second commercial on national TV. Mm-hmm. We've always been in videos. We've never been on national TV. So when the guy that we initially met with saw it on New York Undercover, he said, "Oh, you guys still out there doing your thing? You know, let's have a follow up meeting." And then everything was good from there. Everything was good from <laughs> there. Hip hop, hip hop, right? <laughs> so you learned that um, you have to speak multiple. You got to be bilingual when you're doing business. You can't come into the Corporate yeah, yeah. room with the nah I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We couldn't, <laughs> we couldn't do that. If you watch Ralph McDaniel, because Ralph McDaniel was the first one to ever put us on TV, mm-hmm. that interview was horrible. Okay. I mean, horrible. <laughs> we, mm-hmm. we didn't know what to do. Everybody was nervous. Everybody was stumbling over their words because, you know, it was new to us, but, you know, we worked it out. When, when you saw, um, when Kanye came up here years ago and we were having a conversation about um, his his apparel company and he was talking about the, you know, I've lost a lot of money and mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure this out. You guys went through that whole thing before anybody, right? So what was your thoughts when you was hearing, did you see that? Yeah, no, I saw it. Yeah. You know, with, with, with him, he, he has a different approach to us. What When we went to the, to actually signed this deal with, with Samsung. They said, you got to make, I think it was three million, $5 million in, five, in three, three years, years, or we're going to either take your name or you're going to have to pay us back the money. We made $5 million in like four months. Mm-hmm. You know, So once we did that, coming around the second season, we made about 20, 25 million. So they was just like, oh, these guys, this is a cash cow. Let them, let them roll. Mm-hmm. And we didn't really have no problems. We was just... Spitting everything out. The only problem that we had is we put too much product out. That was mm. our problem. What do you mean? You oversaturated the market? Exactly. And then the value went down? Yeah. When y'all did your, um, um, I guess, uh, the, the design books, you know, for cut and sold, did y'all do, did y'all get your stuff manufactured overseas and then brought back over here? Or where? Yeah, everything that we did was overseas. Everything okay. we did, we, we produced everything overseas. And, and, you know, being that we had that Samsung tie, they had their own factory, so we was able to go in there and do whatever we need to do. And, you know, it was like an open bank because we were making so much money. Okay, so uh, did y'all have any um, <laughs> issues with knockoffs? Because a lot of times you use those oh, distributors, yeah. they'll take your designs, right. do it generically, and they see it all over the world without the yeah, food. Yeah, yeah. Y'all had see, that? I'm about to drop a gem on you. Okay. We spent about $10 million fighting the counterfeiters and didn't make a dent. So wow. we were frustrated. And I don't know how many of y'all know about 28th Street. They got Buku <laughs> bootleg down there. Mm-hmm. So one day we came up with this bright idea to go down there and hire these uh, correction officers, <laughs> the post is police, to go <laughs> confiscate the goods. <laughs> so they confiscated all the goods, but one of them saw a tray of Rolexes. Uh-huh. And he slid them in his pocket, and somebody was like, looking through the peephole and was like, they're not cops. Surround these guys when they get downstairs. And when they got downstairs, they had like 100 people around them. And they called us and was like, hey, we need help down here. So we went down there. My cousin, I see my cousin swinging a a, um, dolly trying to keep everybody back. Where I'm from, if your man is in trouble, yeah, you go help him. Mm -hmm. So my dumb ass ran over there (laughs) and jumped in this fray. 
And before I know it, rocks and bottles and we was in a riot, a full flown riot. And I got I got beat up. Uh-huh. I ain't gonna lie, cause I got jumped. You got molly huh? <laughs> yeah, Keith? I got I got, okay. I got jumped. I, was, I came I came limping I came limping back to the office, something serious. I was like, you know, but we tried and and you really don't have no um no wins with that. Because it's coming from all different directions. Ain't nothing you could do about it, huh? Mm-mm. It helps you in a way because it puts your product out there for everybody to see. And then yeah. you're like, damn, everybody wearing FUBU, you know? But on the other side, you're not getting that money, so. Wow, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got Keith from FUBU. Chauncey Bell is here, by the way. <laughs> Big chance. Nobody the connector. Got nothing, so nothing. Got nothing for you, Chauncey. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's all you gotta say. That's, all that, that's my life, bro. Hey, did, did 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 y'all did y'all retain ownership of Fubu the, the entire time, or did y'all mm-hmm. sell it? So it's all. So I'm gonna tell you, in 1998. Tell, tell them that nobody knows that y'all still own it. They don't know nothing. So please make it clear, because these idiots out here. I'm gonna call it. You know me. I'm gonna call it what it is. They've been saying Fubu is sold, and nobody. I they, heard that though. Yeah, I heard y'all didn't have ownership. So, like, yeah. so around 1998, we was making so. Much, that's when we start hitting the 350 million mark. So everybody was trying to figure out how to slow us down. So they created this this lie that we sold the brand, so people wouldn't buy it. So what they did mm. was um. Wow. Excuse me. You heard cre- this before though. Right? Didn't you hear about they sold the brand? Yeah, yeah we thought. Yeah. Yeah. So so. This, this this rumor has been going on since 1998, and no matter what we do, no matter what we say, people just oh I, I thought you sold the brand and it's not. We sold territories. I think I think we sold like Korea for like 40, 50 million. We Japan, sold Japan. Japan. We sold Philippines, but we own the rights to everywhere else. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But you know, we've said this in countless interviews that we haven't sold, and, and that's what it was. So. But we still own it. We still, you know, we just relaunched it in 2017 and, mm-hmm. you know, had a bunch of collaborations with Puma and Mitchell and Ness and um, who else? Urban Outfitters, mm-hmm. and Forever Ebbets 21. Fields, Forever, Forever 21, 21, Century 21. Like, we, we did a we did a lot. Do you know who then. started the rumor? No, no, I wish I did. Somebody's mama. <laughs> See, that's why we, you see what I mean? Like, you know, this is what I'm saying, Keith. Why are you in the chair? I don't know. He, don't, he got nothing to I do with food. I'm sorry. I got see, why is he in the chair, man? He's a connector. All right. Uh, man, okay, well, look, I, I told folks about this 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 giveaway that, that we're doing for Father's Day, FUBU in Karaka suits, right? Right. Talk about this. Why? Why is this important? You know, um, with suits, you know, back in the days, we used to get approached about, you know, our brand. It was like, yo, man, if you guys wore suits or you made suits, I would wear your brand. So it became a demand, and we was like, you know what? We were going to create this avenue for people who want to wear suits but don't necessarily want to wear the hoodies, the the big logos, and everything like that. But when we hooked up with Caraco, we've been doing suits since back in the days, but we just hooked up with Caraco maybe about four or five years ago. And they make these wonderful suits. Been in business for, I think, eighty years or something uh-huh. like that. And you know, and it's important for us to always dress people. You know, especially on Father's Day. You know, that's that's something. And we've always been about giving back too. So this is something. This is our way of giving back to people who you know. Who and I and I just want to say uh, the number one tuxedo suit sold for how many years? In like five or six years, yeah, it was, like was a Fubu tux. And people don't even know that. You like, know that, wow. Mike? No, that's, that's why I said, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so, like, FUBU has touched everything. So this is, like, really important that people understand. Like, FUBU isn't limited to the 05 on the jersey. Right. It's way bigger than that. He got on FUBU frames. He, the hats. The, the, watches, the, the watches, I remember, are, yeah. Everything. Like, FUBU has been, like, a important part of the culture and, and doing the collaboration with Rocco. And I think that's what people really don't get. Collaboration is the key to everything. It keeps you relevant. It puts you in in in, in networks that you never get a chance. Mm. And FUBU is always about doing collaborations. That's big about it. So doing this partnership with uh, Caraco with Caraco Suits is really big. And the reason I hit you up, Sway, and you know back in the day, uh, I used to give away uh, suits for Father's Day on the beat in L.A., KML. That's right. So on the, I used to, like, that was oh, my okay. person. I used to take the money out of my pocket. The funny part, Steve Harvey Suits, I'm the one that hooked Steve Harvey up with 
the company that did Steve Harvey's suit. Oh, you the real oh, connector. Wow. Damn, you hooked Steve Harvey Keep up? Keep saying he's a connector. That's oh, what he said. Well, I, he wasn't I, playing. I thought he was joking. I didn't get a dime for that. But they used to give me, you know, free stuff. And they got me suits. So it's really big to me because um, my father's first suit, the reason I'm, you know, I hit you up and wanted to do this, my father used to wear suits. My father was the OG gangbanger back in the day. When I was born, he stopped gangbanging. And sorry if I get a little emotional because it's all right. It means a lot to me to do this. Right. Because mm. men don't get the respect. We just got to go do our jobs and do our thing. That's right. And so my father, I was able to buy him a dope suit. Dope. And some Stacey Adams because he's a Stacey Adams guy. You know how that mm-hmm. works. And when I put that, gave him that suit, he lost his mind. And I started buying him suits. I was able to buy him suits. And that was the, when I first started doing street promotions for Interscope. So it's important for me to do this more often. I had stopped. I had stopped for a couple years. I had stopped for a couple years during this period when I left the record business. And when I got with FUBU, I was like, yo, let's give the suits away. And I want to do this more often. Uh-huh. You know, whenever y'all yeah. want to do it, I want to give away suits to people in the community that are helping. Great graduations, fathers, graduations, proms, not just yep. that, but we got people that are helping in the community that are giving everything. Let's dress them up when they go to these city council meetings or going to get Interview, grants, yes. interviews, all that kind of stuff. So I want to do things to bring more awareness and help people get, you know, get these suits. So Amen. Yeah, and then we also, we also. Okay. Beautifully shared, Sean. Peace. 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 Good we, we also um, work with this company called 100 Suits out in Queens in our area where we grew up at. A guy named Kevin Livingston. He does a lot of good work for, you know, young men coming out of jail. He gets them jobs, cuts them up, gets them shaped up, and then we put suits on them so they can go out and get these job interviews. So we've been doing this. I've been working with him for about 10 years now. So that's wow. what we've been doing. Mm. This is amazing, man. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of men online that want suits. Mm-hmm. Lines lit up. So, mm-hmm. Chauncey, we, we talked about this. How, how are we gonna do this? I just need to tell, I think people should just tell stories about things they're doing. You know, being a great father, I want to hear that, but I want to hear what you, how you're helping your community. Because mm-hmm. those are people I want to help. Because you helping people, we want to give back to you. So we're just letting y'all know what we're going to do. We're going to give away three suits uh, for the person. And those suits, they're interchangeable. So you can make probably six outfits, out six to three. seven out of three. Two shirts, two socks, two ties. Wow. So you'll be able to interchange and, you know, tell somebody to buy some shoes. But we don't have the shoes, but we'll get that the next time. So one person to get three suits? Three suits, Uh two shirts, shirts. two ties, two pair of socks. And how many of those packages are we giving away? How many people go win three suits? I mean, what you want to do? I mean, you want to do two? You said you you want to do five? Who said five? Keith, I, just, I thought it was a ventriloquist somewhere. Who did that? Keith started. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm going to take the L. I'm going to take the L. We'll do three. I do we'll three. do three? I, do, do three. I'll, okay. take the, I'll take the L for that. We'll do three, and okay. that'll be on me. So we'll do three packages for three people. But if we do three, I want to do one. I want to do this once a month. I don't want need to come in. Y'all just do y'all thing, and, and y'all promote the suits. Wow. We could do it once a month? Once Three a month. people That's once dope. a month? Wow. We'll do, For we'll, the rest of we'll the year. We'll do, we'll do once a month and do two, uh, two. Uh, we'll give away two giveaways once a month on y'all show. Y'all can do it whenever y'all want to do it. That's dope. For the God rest bless. of the year. Let's do that. That's and nice. then um, with the stories, we'll do them live on the air when we do it next month. But I think this first one, they should contact you. No, no, 100%. Yeah. Everything go direct. I'm going to connect you straight to everybody. We're outfit, you know, the team here. If y'all want to get suits, we make sure y'all taking care of. Okay. Sway, I never, I only see Sway in like old Steve Harvey suit, but he still wear the same suit from 87. I'm okay. not even going to respond to that. <laughs> I don't even need to. Sway be looking sharp. Come on. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> Red carpet Sway. Come on, stop, what? man. Red carpet yeah, Sway I, I got, is I, it's true. I got a it's couple true. of pictures with Sway. We yeah. suited up. Yeah, come on, true. talk to this bum. Sway be suited and booted. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Talk to this dude right here, Mike. Mike, Mike, you got any questions you want to throw in there? You a suit wearer? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I have a couple. I mean, both are such you know really great stories. Um, Chauncey, since you left off about that, I just think that it's so important that we take for granted how easy it is for us to get suits, right? And not mm-hmm. really understanding how many men just don't own a suit, yeah, and what that does for you emotionally, mentally, spiritually, 
to be seen as whole. I think that's why we always in a black church. Sometimes people, you know, riff the black church for the you know, dresses and the suits and all the colors, but that's the most time the black man can dress up, you know. Mm. Most of the time, nine to five, he's in a uniform Monday through Friday, and so then he can be on Sunday as a deacon, yeah. as that's a yeah. leading altar mm-hmm. call. And that's the beauty of the black church when it comes to dressing. And so uh, I, thank you for bringing that. I want to add something else. One thing about FUBU, I'm 6'6", six, six. I'm 270, right? All you big guys, they have them in 5'6". That's what I was going to say. Yeah. So that was my next. You mentioned collaboration, Chauncey, and I thought that was funny. And salute to Keith because one of the reasons why Horse, my husband, used to always wear FUBU. Obviously, big guy, it fit. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons he shops at Caraca, it's in Jersey, it's right around the corner from us because they have suits that fit. So mm-hmm. this makes so much sense to me. I applaud y'all for always considering this and not being fat. It's just no, dudes are big, big dudes. tall, yeah, yeah, variety, yeah. you know, yeah. variety. And, and y'all, y'all cover everybody. So th- I think that collaboration is perfect. So thank y'all for yeah, real. Yeah. Okay. I do have a question for Keith, though. I'm just wondering. Um, I didn't know. I'm one of those people who didn't know that FUBU hadn't been sold. Right. right. Um, and so I have seen the collaborations, but I just thought however it got sold, it was being licensed. Yep. Um, yeah. So it's collaborators. So just, I mean, to clear the record of people out there listening so we can support, like, are there collections that you guys are putting out? How yeah. frequently? Or is it only a collaboration base? No, no. You can go to um, FUBU.com and we have the suits. And uh, I'm sorry, the, the collections on, on FUBU.com. We just did a... Uh, collect the last collaboration we did was with Black Panther for the movie Actively Black. Shout out to Actively Black. I remember and, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we did Black Panther Fubu and then Actively Black. We doing yeah. a collaboration with them as well. Uh, y'all really like if y'all want to collaborate, hit up Keith. Hit me up. We down to collaborate with anybody. You got to make sense to be honest. It's business, bro. Of course. Y'all, you gotta yeah. Have your, yeah, it got to be up the par. <laughs> right, right, right. But we yeah. want to collaborate <laughs> with many people as possible because that's how you change the world. Look, I got some folks on the line real quick. Michigan, let's go to Nick. Nick, what up, Nick? Nick in Michigan. Nick, 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 I can't believe I got out. Hey, hey, Nick, get to it, though, man. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Let's hear the story, Nick. You know Let's hear the story, Nick. Superhero. Miro Man. Go ahead, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, quick story. When I was uh, a kid in elementary, um, I went to a school in uh, in, in Michigan, and uh, it's most kind of a mixed community, you know, black, white. Um, and then I got my parents took me out and moved me over to another school, which was predominantly white. Um, but I had a FUBU jersey, uh, 05 on the front. It was, it was maroon and yellow. Mm. And man, when I got there, I wear that jersey. People were looking at me like, what is this boy doing? And, uh, it was crazy. I still got that jersey though. It's in my closet at home. Yeah, got a lot of more value on it. You can NFT that baby. You can do a lot. <laughs> you can do a lot. Yeah, that's so, one thing we was, we was big on was quality. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and that's why it lasted so long. And um, Nick, you want a suit? I'm gonna give you some information. And everybody tuned in uh, to tell your story directly to Chauncey. Chauncey, where can they tell their story? You can go to. Ooh, we should go. Let's go. Go to uh, Fubu. Um, we'll, what we do is put this up on uh, the in Instagram and tell your story on Fubu at Fubu. At Fubu. Yeah. At Fubu, at Fubu. Fubu on okay. Instagram. On Instagram, and we'll go through it, and we'll pick two. Three people. Three people. And then we'll give you the names and let y'all, you know. We'll shout them out, but they're going to take care of sending you the suits, getting your measurements, the whole nine, however that's going to work. Yeah, you get your measurements at the crib. We'll show you what. Go to Man Warehouse. Yeah. The measure you tell you're going to buy a suit and walk out. You know the game. reference, Sway in the Morning. Yeah, you got to say Sway in the Morning, (laughs) FUBU Suits, Caraco. And we got you. Put hashtag Caraco. God damn, that's a whole lot. I know, that's all right. a lot. That's all right. Don't, but it's all on Instagram, at FUBU, Nick. And everybody who's called, Nick, you're a citizen, by the way. I swear you um, John is in Georgia. Never had a suit before, right, John? Wow. Never, never, never. Why not? To be honest, like, you know, I mean, I was a street dude, so it was like, unless I was going to court, I ain't never dressed up for nothing. That's a good point. How, and at how that old are you? Was, how old are you, John? I'm about to be 44. And to make it so bad, like, I died 20 years ago. John, and I didn't even have a suit 
John get a suit. That's John get a suit. Okay. John get a suit. Hold Look, I'm gonna put him. I'm gonna put you on hold. I'm gonna put you on hold. Put on hold. Yeah, yeah. I need his John. Info. Yeah, he 44. Damn, never had a suit. Except to go to court. What about weddings? He didn't have one for his funeral. Let's go. Funeral, he said. Oh. Really? He didn't. That's what he just said. Yeah. Wow. Um, wow. We're gonna take him to Montreal. Montreal. What's up, JC? Hey, JC. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Excellent. You never had a suit. I did have a suit. I did. But uh, I think it's important exactly to, you know, to have at least one. Okay. Right now, it's been a while because I've been, <laughs> I've been gaining weight, losing weight. So right now, I don't know what fits. Okay. Well, that, that, they got they got one, one size fit all FUBU suits, too. So you know all you got to do is <laughs> go to Instagram at FUBU, all right, JC? And, and also, yo, just right. y'all know, the deal at Caraco right now is you get three suits for $799. You get socks, shirts, all that. It's a whole package deal. So it's seven hundred ninety nine dollars for the package for the people that don't win. If you want to get your father some, and again, those suits can turn into eight, seven, eight different suits because you just interchange the jackets, the pants, so on and so. Mm -hmm. We'll put a video up as well, so y'all, because a lot of y'all don't know. Like you got suits, you wearing the same suit. If you switch it out with a beige jacket with the black pants and beige pants with the black jacket, you, you, you still rocking, right? You still mm -hmm. rocking, yeah. And nobody knows the difference, so that's the secret. Okay, so Keith in Maryland, um, Eric in Oklahoma City, G-Shock in Arizona, Chad in Texas, um, John in Georgia, hold on the line. Uh, tell your stories, right? Yeah. Go to at FUBU on Instagram, right? Yeah. Um, go. Yeah, and they're yeah. going to go through the stories, and they're going to select people and hit you on a DM. Uh, or hit you back. And hit you back, okay? Right. Just go to the DM and say at FUBU, and then tell us, say Sway in the morning, yeah. and then tell us your story. And then we're going to come back. And tag at Sway in the Morning on Instagram so we know it's real deal. Because they'll get it and we'll get it in case we miss somebody. Okay, sounds good. Keith, it's good having you on the show, brother. Yes, sir. You got to come back. Yeah, I'm going to come back. Yeah. You know what? We got some chapters. Yo, yeah. Next, yeah. next month, if you want to do the suits, have all three partners. No Damon. Just okay. the three partners. They got stories, yo. Y'all will be blown away and yeah. stuff. Yeah. But they can do the suit thing. Y'all got time? Bring all three of them back. Okay, let's do it because Damon all politically correct. Yeah, we don't, we don't yeah. do Damon. Yeah. All right. yeah, we, do the, we, do the we still hood, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey, Keith, thank you for coming by, bro. Keep Appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Okay, thank cool. Thank you, thank thank you man. Come on. Thank hey, Chauncey, thank you, brother. Always. Beautiful, man. Appreciate y'all. Absolutely, man. Oh.